like the internet's kind of a big deal and we're barely halfway globally so it's like yeah by the time bitcoin's 15 percent, the world will be entirely different or probably most banks will already be dead but as crazy as it is you know and, and maybe maybe a lot of the banking system still survives maybe it just gets funneled up into larger and larger banks but it's it's gonna be a lot of change and you know it's like i always tell people you don't have to go all in bitcoin you just have to get off zero Exactly. Yeah, I, I yeah. Pro probably most people watching your show are, are disagreeable types that have a, the disagreeable obsessed types that have already gotten at zero. But it's like, you know, that I guess to say that to remind people is just you don't have to then, convert your fan. You don't have you don't have to convert your family into being obsessed like you. Exactly. Just, you just have to get them to get a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars of Bitcoin, lock it away properly. Forget about it for five years. Yeah. So when they're finally more because you know, it might just be that agreeable disagreeable thing. Maybe they're more agreeable people. And you'll never get them to understand the way you do just because their personality is not wired that way. All right, All welcome right. to the show, Luke Broles. How are you doing, man? Thank you. I, I'm doing well. I, I'm doing well. We were just talking before we recorded. It's uh, We're recording this right after I did the, um, I spoke at the Canadian Bitcoin conference in Toronto. It was wonderful, fantastic time. There were like 350, 400 people or so. And um, yeah, it was a blast. So I'm quite tired, but loving it. It's it's a good kind of tired. So yeah, glad we're doing this. Awesome. Well, listen, uh, look, I mean, I was planning to do a long format, but you know, maybe in a few months or whenever you have some time, uh, I'd love to do uh, even a live streamed uh, long format um conversation with you but since um you are a little bit under time pressure um i i thought um because you are uh, you have sort of declared or announced on your uh on everywhere on social media on twitter that you intend to do a movie right a film project so i yeah. thought we could focus on that because i um i'm not sure how long you've been involved in the beacon community but it's been a I mean it's been a couple of years and I initiated this group, you know, with Knut Swanholm, Yoni Appelbeck, and a bunch of other Bitcoiners. And I was, you know, intended to, you know, initiate this film project. Um, in the end, you know, it didn't work out or whatever. Um, you know, it just, everybody wants to do their own thing. So it's it's, it's a little bit difficult to coordinate and organize uh, these kind of things. But yeah, why didn't you first uh, look, since uh, you're the uh, first time on my show, uh, just a little bit about your background, because it's really fascinating. Um, uh, like a short, brief introduction, like how did you get to Bitcoin? What's your journey? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah, i always happy to come back and live stream or Q&A or, or with, with chat or whatever, whatever you think. Yeah, I'm, 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 that sounds awesome. I don't actually know if I've, yeah, I guess I've done one of those. But anyway, yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, my background um, for, for, well, really, I've always loved doing projects. I've always been ambitious. I've always um, just enjoyed doing things, hobbies. When I was younger, the thing I gravitated most of all, gravitated to most of all, was filmmaking. I was uh, making lots of movies, uh, documentaries, narratives, features, shorts, and I did the film festival circuit for multiple years. And that, that you know, strangely enough, it kind of feels like it's gone full circle with these Bitcoin conferences. But anyway, I did that. Um, I went to uh, school for film for a while, and then I went to college uh, for finance, um, and then. Let's see, about five years ago or so, I started learning about personal finance. I told that story before online and um, going down, down rabbit hole. Um, late 2019, I was Bitcoin curious. And then 2020, I really realized that, wait a second, bond market is showing major red flags. You know, I was like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. And so then between those two things, I started buying Bitcoin 2021 and really went hardcore um, early 2022, when I understood Bitcoin only, and I and at least I, I feel I better understood the true use case of it, uh, not just as an inflation hedge, but as much more than that. And um, so yeah, and then early this year, I posted one thing, and it went well. Actually, it, I don't know if you know this, but I made multiple YouTube videos, like half a dozen YouTube videos, post them online. They got no views, nobody cared. But as soon as I posted on Twitter, it went. For, for Bitcoin Twitter, it went viral. <laughs> you know, I, I always like to say that I'm famous within a very small community. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, that's how we are. It's like there are the celebrities in the Bitcoin space, but it's like they're not actually. So, so I always debate saying whether viral famous work because it's not really. But anyway, um, yeah, people like my work. Um, and since then, it's been kind of a whirlwind. I've been going to conferences, meeting people, 
doing shows like this. Um, and then people are like, oh, Luke, you should write a book, you should write a book. And it's like, you know, maybe I will someday, but I feel that my time would be much better, better spent making a movie. Because I think that a movie yeah. would educate normies much better. Because people don't want to read a book or five books about it. They want to watch a movie that they can see in 90 minutes. So so anyway, that's what I'm doing. It, it's kind of crazy. The fundraising is going well. The production is moving along slowly and steadily. Hopefully by October we'll have all the fundraising. But it's, um, yeah, it, it feels great. So fulfilling and tiring. <laughs> So yeah, that's, I that's how I got here. Proposal about this move because you know, with a movie or with a film project, uh, I mean, is it going to be like a pure documentary, uh, like, or is it like a mixed genre? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So most Bitcoin documentaries, I feel, are, and it's not that they're bad. It's just I think that they're not ideal for reaching to the masses because a lot of them are interviews, casual discussions, or frankly, doom and gloom without really emphasizing them. Or, you know, it's just, to me, I don't think it gets the right mix. And for some people, it is the right mix. But I think for our target audience of trying to deepen conviction of Bitcoiners, number one, and then also number two, reach new people, I I think what needs to be done is define the problem so well that the solution becomes obvious. You know, and I think, I think when you put it that way, it kind of makes sense. If you just, if we just keep saying to people, Bitcoin's the solution, Bitcoin fixes this, it's like, you know, People don't care, you know. People don't want to start working out until they're overweight. People don't want to quit smoking until they realize there's a health. You know, we, we don't want to fix things and we don't want to support the solution of something until the problem is so obvious to us that we can't even see it. So that, that's the goal of the movie. So actually, probably the majority of the movie won't even address Bitcoin. It's just going to be addressing the problem, but with the right framing and the right context so that the last third or the last half or whatever when Bitcoin's introduced, it's like, oh, yeah, this is obvious. And, and you know, I think also that dispels a lot of the uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you know, so that we don't have to be always on the defense of, oh, actually, energy use is good, and no, actually, you know, this is good, and that's not bad. You know, I think we just define the problem. I think so much of that just goes away. So, yeah, it, it's kind of a documentary, but it's it's going to be very visually focused. It's going to be very, um, well, you know, it'll be fast-paced. Um, you know, to keep people's attention spans because all of our attention spans are so short. But but yeah, that's the goal. There, there's a place for podcasts. There's a place for books. And those are things that are wonderful. I'm not hating on those in the slightest. It's just that I think we also need this. And I think when it comes to this, there's a shortage of this exact kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm sure, you know, like in my case also, um, I mean, I've been in Bitcoin community like for such a long time and uh, there are, you know, I'm sure in, also in your case, uh, there are like a few Bitcoins or characters uh, that have a really huge impact or that really expands your horizon. You know, uh, some of them like, yeah. for, I'm just, you know, just for example, like Jeff Booth, you know, when he talks about like, I mean, I love his book, I love his, you know, wisdom and his, and his humble humility and, and the way he approaches things like totally out of the box, you know, like, and for me, this is like, uh, he, he just complimented the already, you know, the knowledge I had or the vision I had of, uh, with Bitcoin or, uh, or a society civilization rooted in Bitcoin, uh, what is possible? What could we, this is the reason I wanted to do this movie, the film project. I'm like, you know, if we yeah. can like convey, uh, I, I want to, I want to like hear your thoughts. Like, how do you, how do you want to approach it? Because it's about emotional impact. It's about like opening, like, uh, I don't know, the cognitive, intellectual, and also, you know, consciousness level, like what is possible with Bitcoin, you know, like it takes on a technological level, even, you know, I mean, I'm not talking like digital, but I'm like on every infrastructural level. And this is like a topic that I always love to talk about. Like, um, you know, once we have, whatever you're going to call it, hyper-Bitcoinization or whatever you call it. <laughs> But once we have that, it's, uh, I think people have, have no clue or it's so hard to imagine when, you know, when Jeff Wood talks about deflation is the key to an abundant future, like on every level you can think of, I mean, we can have so much comfort, so much technological evolution at every level would be energy, transportation, uh, health, regeneration or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. Do you want to like uh, spill some ideas or, I mean, whatever you want to talk about, like, but how do you want to approach this? Yeah, I, I love your passion. It clearly comes through. You, Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. So many Bitcoiners, I, I mean, obviously a lot of the ones that you and I hang out with have this passion, but, you know, again, we're a very small subset of Bitcoiners within Bitcoin owners. So anyway, that that's, anyway, you, you get it. Um, yeah, how to approach that? Um, okay, so, so like I said, I was in Toronto and I, you know, in the midst of all this evolved that's going on, I try to take these little bitty 
after your vacations. And so I spent yesterday afternoon at Niagara Falls and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. Um, it was not really what I, well, similar similarities and differences. I, I won't get into that. That's more of a personal thing, but, but I guess that there was a statue of Nikola Tesla. And I think approach, I think that's a good example of what you're saying there, because what was Tesla's vision? You know, wh why, why I mentioned Tesla before uh, and, and other people have mentioned him, what, what's, to me, what's really admirable about him is his vision of the future, just like Jeff Booth talks about and others talk about, like I have talked about, is having energy prices go down forever, more or, less, or you know, indefinitely is probably a better term than forever. And um, likewise, um, and likewise, sorry, there's a little bit of noise here. Having energy prices go down indefinitely and um, ultimately that, being a means for the end of increasing human prosperity and human flourishing. To me, that's the large vision. And to me, that's what's exciting about Bitcoin is that, you know, that's why these beat-ups, and that's why I'm just going all out on it. And, and like like you understand too, you, you work super hard on this, you know, I know. It's, 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 because, it's not because of Bitcoin. It's because of the value we see gained to people's lives because of it. I have met so many people that say for the first time in their lives, they are whatever trying to trying to get in better habits trying to eat better trying to eat cleaner trying to lose weight trying to get rid of addictions in their lives whether that's drug related or or, or whatever um you know, or even you know perhaps social media you know all of our our phones and everything it's like it's it's a lot um you know or or perhaps you know different things like maybe they just want to spend more time with their kids maybe they want to actually pursue finding a spouse for the first time in their life after being single and finally realizing wait i'm really lonely and i've been lonely for a long time or or perhaps it's something more practical more directly related to bitcoin you know perhaps there's someone in a developing nation where they haven't had hope for their children's education or financial future just because the options are so small but now for the first time they can save you know 10 bucks a week which they've never been able to before because they can't buy stocks they can't do anything else so so i guess how to approach it and and this is yeah it's, it's fun with the movie but i guess to answer your question more broadly, it's what I try to do in general online is I try to give the larger context of that. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin is not that its story is this decade or this century. It's, it's a longer story of how our ingenuity and our innovation, we're trying to make our, our own lives better and other people's lives better. And, you know, people, people have different worldviews for that. You know, it's, it's fascinating to me how different people with different backgrounds come to it for different reasons. You know, th there's, you know, obviously, well, you know, it's 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 funny because obviously I'm religious, and so the more religious crowd comes to it from their like mission work or their involvement with with the developing world, and then people that aren't religious come to it from their basis in logic and wanting to pursue reasoning and math and everything like that. And then you have the finance people that come from their background of seeing the problem. So it, it's it's just a basic help. You know, people of different beliefs and people of different industries are all coming together with with wildly different reasons and all coming to the conclusion that yeah we should keep increasing the prosperity of every per every person on earth and i would argue the most efficient way to do that is to upgrade the form of money which people are saving in because money is the form of value of which we price in all other forms of value so yeah that's that's my thought on that i i suppose i don't know if that was what's the best i could but yeah it's yeah it's, it's amazing uh huh. What's your personal experience like when you talk to people? Would it be I don't know in your family circles or friends circle? Anybody like you, people you meet? Like do you do you do you like start talking about like but the causes like or other topics like do or do you try to like get to the bottom of it or to or talk about Bitcoin? Like what's your what's your like what is it? Yeah, yeah. What's no, but before before Twitter, I definitely talked a lot more about it. Um, anymore, I just don't with those my own in real life personal life um and that's not because i care for them any less it's just that i don't have the mental bandwidth anymore you know it's it's um you know it's 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 a lot it's it's a lot to you know do everything i can at these conferences and and online and it's wonderful i get so much well i i have a small group of haters too but i i get mostly positive feedback and so it's just it's just a matter of working effectively and you know that that's one of the reasons why i encourage people to get off zero is because it's not just me i'm not saying to say oh look at how busy I am. i'm important it's just to emphasize that i'm not alone we're all going to be like this you know all of us all the bitcoiners today 
are going to be in the spot where it's going to just get increasingly busy. Because if we're the first out of, let's say, a thousand people that will eventually use Bitcoin, it's like just as adoption continues faster and faster and faster, I think I think it will cause change faster in the world, faster than our human brains can adapt. And so I think there's going to be a massive shortage of Bitcoiners educating people versus people that desire to be educated. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I, yes and no. I, I used to talk a lot about it now, not as much. Um, I think I've greatly improved my communicating um, over the last even few months, especially. And, and that nice thing about social media is that you get real time feedback, you know, from a large group of, group of people, you know. So what versus doing one on one or what you know one on three is it's very slow, very come, you know. Not that it's bad. It's just it's just different. And I think that trying to approach Bitcoin from different avenues online, you get feedback much quicker and you learn what works and what doesn't work much faster. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I think I think you're muted. <laughs> no, no problem. We, we've all done that. That's you know that's the funny thing with Zoom or or Google Meet or whatever is that you know. We used to, we not have that problem, but now that's one of those funny intricacies of communicating is that, oh, wait, I'm muted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I always try to shut up and, and just, you know, mute myself. So, I, you know, there's no interferences. Uh, um, so since you, I mean, I, I think I should save this topic for another long form, but since you brought it up, I mean, you said you're a religious person uh, and I think it is truly important. I mean, I, I call it the spiritual aspect of it. Um uh, now, independently of the movie or of the film project, um, would you, I mean, is do people do do you do you meet a lot of people who who uh, you know firmly say we we are in a spiritual um, what do you want to call it like battle or I mean yeah. it, it is truly spiritual if you look around it's it's insane what's going on you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we have a daughter, she's like two and a half years old and, you know, we think about her future and, you know, this whole thing with this whole LBGT and woke and grooming and, you know, and it's so mind boggling, you know, and, and, um, but I think the spirituality or your Christianity, I think plays a huge role in this. Uh, is yeah. that something you want to like, uh, you know, put it into the fabric um, of whatever discussion you would have or in the film project? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I get asked that. Why do you talk about your beliefs? Uh, it, 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 just as a precursor for answering your question is, is that, you know, I, I just want to be fully transparent in what I believe, because it's like when we're talking about money and we're talking about worldviews, it's like everyone has a belief system. And so if someone is going to be following me and try to hear what I think of the world, but, you know, it, it's like if I was on that, if I was in their shoes, I think I would want to know everything that they believe because I think if we know if, you know, well, I just think of myself, I want to know everything that other people believe because it's like, you know, that way I can try to judge myself. Okay, what do we agree on, disagree on? How do I think our agreements would aid or harm our worldview? Where are, you know, where's the, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I just think it's useful. And, and I think also, you know, it's, Anyway, I, I just think that the pros outweigh the cons, definitely. And, uh, you know, and, and that's for everyone, not just people that agree with me. I, I think it's a good thing that people share as transparently as they can. You know, for some people, it's not what's best for them. Some people want to remain anonymous or pseudonymous, and I think that's fine. Perhaps that matters less than But I think if someone's going to put their face out there, the name out there, like, that's another reason I, I want to have my face out there. So people know that I'm young and, and have this experience. You know, I, I get hate sometimes, like, oh, you're so young. It's like, well, yeah, I mean... I, I think it's better for me to make it known I'm young instead of be pseudo anonymous and pretend I'm this 50 year old, you know, equity expert or something like that. So, <laughs> um, and it, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm 20, I'm 24. I'm 24. Wow. That's really, wow. That's very young. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, very young. But... You, I mean, in your age, I mean, when I was your age, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm 51 and then, um, I, when I was at your age, I mean, I sometimes I'm, I, I really am envious or, you know, <laughs> it's like, wow, it's like so young. Like, you know, people like, who is that? Uh, Dylan Leclerc, for example, you know, people like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's like amazing at that age, like so, having so much knowledge, so much, you know, like compliment, contemplation and discussions and, and knowledge and wisdom and so smart and clever and like super focused on one topic. I mean, I used to have like maybe when I was 27, maybe 30, you know, like when your character forms around plus. Yeah. So, yeah. 
But you know, well, I just well, get to know a little bit your yeah your spiritual approach because I think we are really in crazy times right now. Uh, definitely, we can think on it. And for me, to be honest, I mean, for us, you know, for my family, it's like a huge spiritual battle. It's it's a uh, it's really literally good against evil. But uh, maybe I'm not, you know. Uh, uh, well, and, and it really shouldn't be a surprise. It's what we see in history too. You know, it's it's um, well, well, um, David, David, and um, Toronto. He and I sat down and recorded a short video about. He has a binder of currencies, and it was just fascinating to go through that and talk about the different examples of inflation and the society because he's so well read on it. It's just amazing. And we talked afterwards as well. And exactly what you're saying is nothing new. It happened at the French Revolution. It happened in the Revolution. It happened at Rome. It happened in. Um, it happened for the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Dutch. I mean, you just go on and on and on. China, like half a dozen times. You know, it, it's it's just a cycle of that. You have society that builds and prospers on top of building new technology, innovating, lowering energy production, like we're saying. And then, you know, we get arrogant, we get prideful, we we uh, <laughs> or maybe a poor choice of words there, or ironic choice of words. But 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 we get prideful, and then we begin to distort reality. We distort the money. Instead of creating, we distribute, and then we get nihilistic. And just like you're saying, when thinking of your daughter or, or, or your children, it's it's like the same thing. Our our world is so nihilistic; it's so um, unbearably sad. And you know, it's that's something I try to explain to my family or, or friends who don't understand why I put so much time and brain power into this. I mean, it's it's literally get up, go, 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 crash in bed every night. It's been like that for months, and thankfully I'm taking a short vacation next week. But um, anyway, it's it's. The fulfilling part is not meeting other people and saying, oh, look, Bitcoin's going to go up. It's meeting other people and them telling me, Luke, for the first time in 10 years, I like have optimism again. Or, you know, other people, for them, they interpret that as, as you know, coming to religion, whether that's Christianity. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's m most people, it has been Christianity, but, you know, some people come to religion. Like I said earlier, other people are just working from your life. And frankly, most people is that they don't know. And that's okay. You know, most people are like, hey, for the first time, I like am actually thinking about the future or I'm or I'm actually, you know, wanting to better my life. And yeah, I, I think you're right. It's a spiritual thing. But, you know, the, the bittersweet truth is that it's probably going to get worse within the fiat world. People will get more nihilistic, more depressed, more suicidal, um, more, you know, as this postmodern virus just continues. But the beauty is that alongside conversations like this or conversations like the one I'm about to have or just hanging out with people, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. Just it's um I, I I've been in some groups where I've been in some places, both myself personally, but especially around other people, that there's just no hope and there's no reason to think about the future. And it's just it's just so wonderful to have magic internet money contribute in some form. To, to changing that. And the beautiful thing is that we think Bitcoin is so inevitable. We think Bitcoin is so sure. We think Bitcoin is so probable. It's like, wow, th this kind of change, again, within this very tidy Bitcoin world, is like, if we're right and Bitcoin has larger adoption, it's like, what if those positive changes also happen? You know, perhaps, you know, I think probably late adopters will be less passionate about it as early adopters, obviously, but um, so perhaps it won't exactly be equal, but it, it's the right direction. It's the right trend. And that alone is mo motivation enough. So uh, yeah. beautifully said. No, beautifully. I can only confirm that. I mean, I've talked to so many people. I mean, you know, also you, you know, you've had you had your own conversations with people. It's like, yeah, it wasn't for Bitcoin. I mean, you know, we wouldn't have like a really super bright, uh, you know, vision and mission and horizon. You know, like yeah. hope, yeah. real hope. You know, like like yeah. this is real. You know, this is. Um, and, and all the properties, you know, Bitcoin has and the essence of, of Bitcoin, it's like, um, I mean, what we can achieve with that, you know, uh, with an exponential rate of speed, you know, as, uh, you know, probably yeah. no further than, than anybody else is like the S curve or the exponential curves and all the laws, you know, that are uh, yeah. governed by that. Yeah, definitely. And it's not even what can Bitcoin do. It's about what are the innovations that will occur on top of that. You know, it, it's like... Anyway, it, it's just amazing. What what if we find cures to diseases? What if we find ways to make food for ten times more energy efficient than we can now while, while preserving nutrition? You know what what if you know what if that's the world we're we're moving towards, and uh, at a faster and faster speed? You know, I 
yeah, anyway, I, I could go on and on. Sorry, yeah. I'll let you ask the questions. I would yeah. be ramble. <laughs> oh, no, I just, I just want to, you know, uh, respect your time. Uh, just the last few minutes, I just want to maybe wrap it up, like, um, because you know, we know, you know, from history, would it be, I don't know, the the revolution in the United States in the whatever 1900s or, or 1800s or whatever, uh, you know, it just takes a couple of percentage of the population to, sure. you know. To, to, to reach a critical like how do you see how do you see that like the bitcoin the, the path of or the the critical mass or the, the the tipping point of bitcoin uh do you see that like exponentially increasing accelerating or do you see us like in three or five years all of a sudden like you know that gradual and yeah. suddenly moment is that something you could you could talk about yeah yeah this is a question i get a lot and i mean the only respectful answer is i have no idea because Anyone that says they have any idea is kind of full of it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, it's it's been wonderful to, you know, I, I mean, to a certain extent, I have increased my insight, I guess, because I've, you know, been behind the scenes with so many Bitcoin companies and, and talked to so many people, both in public and in private in the last few months. But at the end of the day, it's like, I have no idea. I'm just a regular person like you or anyone. Like, I don't know. Um, I think on one hand, it could be fast because... Again, there's the infinite money glitch of a central bank of what if they realize, oh, wait, we can print currency, buy Bitcoin, back our printed currency with the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin goes up in value. And so therefore, we can justify printing more currency. I, I think I think that's the big point. I think there will be before that and after that where, you know, I mean, and that's not as absurd as it sounds. We see that in all in places all around the world. We see that, you know, Lebanon is one of the most recent examples. Nigeria is also another example where literally overnight, it goes up by a factor of 10. And that's that's the not the black market rate. That's the public rate. Number one, and then number two, that's a weak currency. You know, the Lebanese currency, very weak currency. Euro is a much stronger currency. The dollar is a much stronger currency, and they could get away with it much longer and much farther, much faster. So, you know, I I think probably it's going to be very slow for many years. Bitcoin just oscillate, and then it'll be fast and. It, so, you know, some people don't like that. Some people in, in Toronto can be a hard time for, they're like, oh, we want it down. It's like, yeah, we yeah we do, but it's it's going to be a while. Um, and the uncomfortable probability, too, I think most Bitcoiners don't want to admit, is that the U.S. dollar or whatever fiat currency they live under could die, and Bitcoin still has to get mass adoption. You know, Argentina is at 100% inflation rate, whatever. Turkey is at, you know, what, 50, 30% inflation. You know, like those are G20 nations, you know, 100 couple hundred million people and bitcoin adoption is much farther along there than it is here but the currency could die everyone gets rug pulled everyone gets wiped and bitcoin adoption will go up but it may not be 100 percent because bitcoin adoption does not accelerate as the rate of currency dying it accelerates as the at the rate of humans changing their mindset and understanding it so so yeah i, I really don't know but i mean at the end of the day what i do know is that the legacy banking and bond system cannot withstand five, ten percent of its users pulling out. And Bitcoin or not, that's already happening. People my age, you know, young people like you know, like like a, like us kids, you know, we, we don't want to buy bonds. Bitcoin aside, we don't want to buy bonds. It's like the demand for bonds globally, not just the US, is gonna get gutted as these generations grow up. And why is that? It's because we are artificially forcing interest rates lower and lower and lower. And anyway, we can't reverse that. And so it's 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 completely stuck. And so I guess either way, the either way, I don't know what Bitcoin's gonna do, but I do know that the fiat system is only gonna have exponential more challenges ahead, and Bitcoin accelerates those challenges. And those challenges don't directly cause Bitcoin adoption, but they accelerate the rate at which people start asking those questions, which then leads to them changing their mindset, which then leads them to adopting Bitcoin. So right. that's a lot there. I, I hope it makes sense. But yeah, yep. people should not people should not expect Bitcoin to go to $100 million anytime soon. Yep. So they should expect that you don't need nearly as much adoption as we think to get absurdly high prices of Bitcoin. That, that's my genuine belief. I mean, pe people 10 years ago when Bitcoin was $11 or $12 would not have believed yeah, but they did it. You could go back, you could read it on Reddit. They thought a ten thousand dollar Bitcoin was impossible. And even if it had happened, we would have global adoption by then. Exactly. Like, you know, and you know, it, it used to be have we're, we're, yeah. you have to think in purchasing power. I mean, you know, you know, yeah. because by the time, you know, it would, you know, theoretically <laughs> reach like whatever, ten or hundred million, is like we have to think in totally different terms. Like in we have to think in purchasing power, you know, uh, for every single set. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's the point, you know, I, I get some of my haters are like, oh, hundred million Bitcoin. That's, that's more money in the world. And it's like, that's kind of the point. <laughs> we're going to make more money. <laughs> we're going to make more currency units. All right. So, um, but yeah, the, the larger point there, and then I get paid from other people that are like, oh, we should take a purchase power, not price. It's like, you know, the, the whole point of the exercise to emphasize that the number is just irrelevant. You know, like again, David's collection of currencies is like I think it was the Hungarian postage stamp was sixty or it was either fifty or sixty thousand billion currency units for one postage stamp. It's like it's irrelevant. The postage yeah. stamp is the postage stamp. It's it's just worth the postage stamp. It's just we just keep adding zeros because human nature, you know, is that we just want to keep adding zeros. So yeah, a million for Bitcoin, a hundred million, a billion, it, it's completely irrelevant, and we will. The world will add zeros faster to weaker currencies, aka not the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar will add zeros the slowest in comparison to all those other currencies. But we're still adding zeros. We feel it now. We're in the U.S. We're adding yeah. zeros, and the rest of the world's declining faster. So, yeah, you yeah, have, purchasing power. That's the emphasis. Exactly. Yeah, and you have know, talked to uh, Greg Foss a couple of times on my show, and and you probably <laughs> met him personally. I mean, he's a he's a, he's a beautiful, I mean, human being is, and you know, yeah, when, he's a character. Yeah. Yeah, he's like he's like a unique character, and you know because he says you know the total addressable market because he adds whatever the the debt volume or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, you know to that whatever 450, 400 to five hundred trillion, uh, he comes like to a round number of nine hundred trillion. So even if it's just like yeah. a small percentage of that total addressable market, that could happen fast. I mean, I I could literally see that happen fast in within the next few years. To be honest with you. No, you're not wrong. It, it could happen very fast. But I, I think Bitcoiners should be aware it can happen literally in a matter of weeks, but have the base assumption that humans are probably dumber than we like to admit, and it's probably going to take us a very long time. And that's not me being pessimistic. It's just the reality. You know, I mean, it, it's 14 years old, and only a small group has figured it out. Granted, we're growing very fast, faster than the early days of the internet. But even if we just keep our current adoption rate, you know, then, yeah. No, but one other interesting fact you might you know, maybe I should comment on. I get the question all the time, why aren't there more women in Bitcoin? And I always say the same thing. It's because that Bitcoin attracts the personalities that are the most disagreeable. And statistically speaking, men are on average more disagreeable than women. And so when you are at the far end of the bell curve, all all the people in Bitcoin are men. It's like at the Bitcoin conference, there's just yet 300, 350 people. There were like maybe 30 women. So it's like, okay, 90% men. Most of which are actually older, but they're not in their 20s. They're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, you know, not, not the young teenagers or young 20-somethings like the media would like to have you believe. But but it's like, okay, what's my point with that? It's like, well, perhaps you're right. You know, perhaps you're right, Kevin. Perhaps it's very fast. Because what happens when all the disagreeable people in the world are already in Bitcoin and the only people left are the agreeable people? Not that that's, not that one's better than the other. It's just staying that fact of what happens when everyone left that hasn't adopted Bitcoin are the people that don't need a thousand hours to learn about it because they're so disagreeable, but instead we'll just go with it because that's what everyone else is doing. You know, to me, that makes sense. And that's kind of how other technologies are adopted before. You have all the misfits and weirdos that are super disagreeable and stubborn. Or like like Foss, you know, I would describe Foss as pretty disagreeable, you know, or, or Max Kaiser or Sailor or Natalie Brunel. Again, it's not, not a, a sex thing. Uh, you know, I mean, all, all these people are extremely disagreeable in good ways. Because they, because they're defending it and they're projecting the inferior way of things. And it's like, what happens when everyone left or people that don't have that mental resistance to get past? Yeah, it? yeah. It's just a thought. All need is like three to, three to five percent. Would you agree with that? Is like you know maybe between three or five percent of whatever Earth population or you know specific populations like three to five percent critical mass, and then it just you know. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a good estimate. It might be higher, might be ten percent if they can really meddle with things. But yeah, I think by the time we get three to five percent global adoption for Bitcoin, it'll be way too. I mean, you know, look at the internet. The internet's only at sixty percent adoption. Yeah, it's like we're right. talking over Zoom right here. It's like the internet's kind of a big deal, and we're barely halfway globally. So it's like, yeah, by the time Bitcoin's fifteen percent, the world will be entirely different. Probably most banks will already be dead. But as crazy as it is, you know, and, and maybe maybe. A lot of the banking system still survives. Maybe it just gets funneled up into larger, larger banks, but it's it's going to be a lot of change. And you know, it's like I always tell people: you don't have to go all in Bitcoin; you just have to get off zero. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think yeah. pro probably most people watching your show are, are disagreeable types that have a, the disagreeable obsessed types that have already gotten off zero. But it's like you know that I guess to say that to remind people: it's just you don't have to 
then, convert your fam- you don't have you don't have to convert your family into being obsessed like you exactly. just, you just have to get them to get a thousand dollars a hundred dollars of bitcoin lock it away properly forget about it for five years yeah so when they're finally more because you know it might just be that agreeable disagreeable thing maybe they're more agreeable people and you'll never get them to understand the way you do just because their personality is not wired that way and so yeah. it might just be anyway it's it's just thoughts hopefully it's useful to people yeah yeah anyway. No, I think, you know, it's also, I think, I mean, I consider it an ethical responsibility. At least, you know, we don't have to tell them we told you so, but at least, you know, I, I love it that you repeat that mantra, you know, get off the, you know, fucking zero, you know, just, get, you know, you're not going to regret. Yeah, yeah. They can't lose anything. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, look, I don't want to like uh, pressure you on the time. Um, no, is, no, I, I could talk a little more. Yeah. yeah. No, I just wanted, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, no, that would, would be a topic that would, would just take a little bit more time, but is there anything about <laughs> Is there anything like really uh, important that you think people should a little bit, you know, start thinking about or I don't know, educating themselves, anything, whatever you think it's important? I mean, I think it's important people to start considering the consequences of the technology because it's just like that's, you know, again, I, I one of the reasons to talk about my personal beliefs is, you know, selfless and I want people to understand my full belief system so they, you know, they see full transparency so that they can see my flaws or, you know, whatever. But I think another part of that too is to encourage people to start thinking beyond Bitcoin because we are not ready for the technologies that are coming. That, that was my first thread was we have less to come with the future than the past. And I think some people assume that I'm just saying, oh, everything's going to be perfect. World's going to be better. It's like, I think that's true to a large extent, but I mean, you know, we just have to be aware that there are major moral questions that are coming that we don't have the answers for. I mean, you know, Genetics is probably a very obvious one. There are so many questions surrounding genetics, editing genetics, designing genetics, both on a practical level of we know enough to be dangerous, but we don't know enough to know really what we're doing. And simultaneously, all the moral questions that we are even less prepared for. So, you know, whether it's that, artificial intelligence, I mean, as controversial as it might, from both sides as it might be to say, is that AI is coming, many jobs are going to be displaced, probably unlike anything we've seen before in history. And so in a similar way that the automobile automobile economically made the horse irrelevant, there's an uncomfortable chance that humans will undergo the same thing this century and early next century. And how do we deal with it? Yeah. Um, I don't think UBI or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I think obviously Bitcoin is the answer practically, but morally, societally, culturally, um, you know, that thousands of years of the majority of humans working for a living we might be in the final era of that. And anyway, I, I, guess, I guess, yeah, I, I mean, you guess parting message. I, I guess that'd be my message. I encourage people to think about what do these things look like? And I think there will be net goods, but everything has a trade-off and everything has a transition cost. It's obviously a better thing to go from punches that gatherers to farmers and then from farmers to the in- industrial world. But in every one of those eras, there's a period of trade-offs, there's a period of transition costs. And we just have to be positive. We just have to be encouraging and help people and ultimately that's my major concern that as bitcoin begins to eat and continues to eat the fiat world that the fiat world will descend so quickly and descend so violently that it will end up in war and granted there's already war within the fiat system but you know obviously i mean a much larger larger war so so yeah i guess that's my hope that bitcoiners will not just be here to help people get off zero but to help people to reorient the worldview towards optimism and re- reorient the worldview towards that better view of the future and understanding that, yes, there are trade-offs, but it's inevitable anyway, and it's probably going to be better on the other side. Because I think if we don't do that, then people will just continue the nihilism longer than they would otherwise. And I think that's I think it's a bad thing for many reasons. So, yeah, I just encourage people to think about those questions. What are the technologies coming, and how do we adapt for it? Because we're at the point where it's changing faster than our brains. It's already... You know, it's like these, these, we're already at that point where apps and, and the news cycle, it's already faster than we can keep up. And it's only going to get faster, I think. Perhaps it slows down at some point in the future, but for a while, it's going to only get faster. And mm-hmm. I think people are severely behind and we need people at the forefront. Because like I said earlier with that discrepancy between people educated about Bitcoin and the rate at which Bitcoin is changing society, I think that's true, not just Bitcoin. But everything after Bitcoin, it's only going to be more true. And yeah. so I, I think people out there like me, like you, like the other people in the Bitcoin space that are not just trying to advance Bitcoin, but trying to advance this line of thinking, I think 
we will have immense value, uh, both towards the sales, because people will be willing to pay us and, and compensate us for our time. But then also, more importantly, we'll be able to bring value to other people because it takes years for human brains to change. And okay. it's not that we're better than anyone else. And like, I think that's the other thing is that this whole have fun sting for shaming people. Oh, look, we told you so. It's funny to a certain extent. And some days I feel it because I just lose my patience. But, but you know, ultimately, I'm not smarter than anyone else. I'm not better than anyone else. You know, I don't think I'm any more moral than anyone else. It's just that my brain is a couple of years ahead of everyone else's. And to most people, these things sound crazy. But if they just let their brain adapt in time, I, I think I think they'll probably come to the same conclusion. Because I was there. I thought it was insane. And now here I am where I'm this, you know, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those Bitcoiners. So anyway, I, I hope that answers your question. I hope oh, that's encouragement. Uh, beautifully said. And I, I love your closing words because um, it, it goes, you know, it feeds back uh, again into the into the into our first topic uh, about your movie project, your film project. Oh, I think it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity with your film project to open up, you know, the minds and the hearts and the souls, you know, of, of the people. Uh, inspire them, and I think the uh, and I think this is why it's so important. The first few minutes of a of a of a film or a movie, like uh, how do you approach them? Like how do you open? How do you, how do you inspire them emotionally? Or in the, and then comes you know the intellectual, cognitive, and uh, comprehension level. You know, yeah. So, uh, where do you want to like? Where can people find you? And I also I know you have a guy guy. Is that called like pronounced? Yeah, guy, guys. Are, guys yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. People can follow me on Twitter and YouTube. I've gotten a whole bunch of requests for other things, uh, Nostr and LinkedIn, you know, depending when you release this, I might have those. Up. Well, Nostr I have up, I'm just not there very frequently. It's, it's just a matter of that. I, I got to get on top of what I'm already trying to do before I expand. <laughs> so yeah, so YouTube, Luke Broyles, Twitter, Luke Broyles, B-R-O-Y-L-E-S, they can find me there. And then on Geyser, um, they can go on Geyser and support the film. Uh, I'm trying to raise twenty thousand dollars, the, the film is hopefully going to appear like it had a six-figure budget. If we do if we do it right, people are donating their time. People are being very generous, or or, or reducing the cost of their time. Um, and and we, we, we've got some great people lined up to, to help make it happen. And um, yeah, also for anyone that donates a hundred thousand sats to the project, aka twenty-five or thirty dollars at the time of recording, um, look at the name of the credits. And the reason for that is, is twofold. Number one, just because some people like that. Um, and then number two, hopefully it's a good orange pilling transition. You know, hopefully if I do my job well enough, we do our job well enough, this movie will get, you know, 100,000 to a million views or maybe even more if we have a re really big bull market. And it's like, you know, maybe you can message your family and say, look, my name's in this video with a million views. Hopefully you should watch it. And then they'll watch it and then they'll find So anyway, yeah, if, if um, and also that's just because that means if we have a thousand people that donate, then we funded the project. So uh, funding's doing very well. I'm overwhelmed with just positivity people they are they are really eager to see this project uh we're already like a quarter of the way there by october i think we should have full funding and so if we reach that and assuming it's not delayed uh then we're looking at free having which is very exciting so um yeah so they can find me on twitter youtube or if they believe in the project and believe in the cause they can find it there it's the case for bitcoin i want to go to geyser under education and films so yeah, all teamwork. It's all <laughs> about the community and teamwork. And if you have the right people, oh my God, you know, with the right passion and and <laughs> yeah, the abilities and skills, oh, it's going to be amazing. Yep. So thank yeah. you very much. It Look, means a lot. I, for time. Yeah, right. yeah. Take care. All right. Bye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look forward to next time. Ciao, Luke.